Okay, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to simplify a radical. And I'm gonna show you three different methods because I know a lot of teachers to show you different ways. So I wanna show you three different methods. All right, um, the first method is, or the first two methods are what I kind of prefer when I learned radicals, so it's the way I prefer to teach them. Um, if you remember, the square root of a number, let's say for instance four, is equal to two, right? So we can always take, there's certain numbers that we can take the square root of. You have the square root of four. You have the square root of, let's see here, nine, which is equal to three. You have the square root of 16, which equals four. And you know what, for right now, I'm just gonna worry about those three numbers um, because that's all I really need to answer this problem. So what you wanna do is, if we have square root of 32, we know that that's not a square number because the next one up would be 25, which is five squared. And then the next one after that is 36, which would be six squared. So I can't physically just take the square root of 32 and get a integer, right? It's gonna be an integer with a fraction or it's gonna, you know, a decimal. So what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to manipulate my square root of 32. Mr. Rothman, will you please call the front office? Mr. Rothman, please call the front office. I'm gonna manipulate this so that it has one of these square numbers. So there's two different ways I could uh, rewrite this. I could say, I can rewrite the square root of 32 as a square root of 16 times two, or you could rewrite it as a square root of four times eight, All right? That's two different ways you could do this. And that's gonna be my third method over there. So now, the reason, um, now, what we have is, we have two different ways. These are two factors, 16 times two is 32, and four times eight is also equal to 32. And now what I'm gonna do is I look at, I can separate these now individually. Whenever you have a square root and two numbers are multiplied, you can separate them out. And I'll show you an example. Let's look at, Four. Uh, no, let's not look at four. Let's look at let's look at thirty-six. The square root of thirty-six, right, could be broken down into the square root of four times nine. Four times nine is thirty-six. We can rewrite that as the square root of four times the square root of nine. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. Two times three is equal to six. The square root of thirty-six is equal to six. So therefore, if you have a multiplication inside a radical, you can break that up into two separate radicals and they're still gonna be true. So that's what I'm gonna to wanna to do with these, is I'm gonna break this up into the square root of 16 times the square root of two. This I'll break up into square root of four times the square root of eight. Well, the square root of 16 is four and I can't find the square root of two, it's not a square number. So therefore, I'll write times square root of two. Now, that is the preferred method. You always want to choose the largest square number that goes into your root. However, let's say you pick four and eight, and that's fine. But however, you're just gonna have a little bit more work on your hands. Because I know the square root of four is two, but then I have the square root of eight. And what you notice is, can square root of eight, can you still rewrite that as a, um, with a square number in, inside of it? And yes, you can write that as two times the square root of four times two which can be rewritten as square root of two times four times the square root of two, which is two times two times square root of two, which is four times square root of two. You get the same answer, but you see how much more work you had to do. Now, obviously I showed a lot of steps here, but make sure when you're doing this, always pick the largest number. Now, the other way a lot of times people like to do this is what we call the factoring tree method, right? So you can factor this. And you just think of, well, what two factors multiplied to give me 32? And you can do this in multiple different ways. Let's just pick our four and our eight. Then you factor it again. Two and two, right? Then here, two and four. And then here, two and two. So then what we do is we group them and we say, and we take those out. So we say, I have these two and then I have these two. So what I have left is one extra two. So whatever's extra still stays under your radical. But whenever you have two of them combined, remember the square root of two times two is equal to two, right? So what I really have is, so this, the square, if you can think about this, is like all over, kind of hard to write. Well, the square root of two times two is two. Square root of two times two is two. 
and then this two is still going to be left behind. So the final answer, again, which is the same thing, is four times square root of two. I don't know if you guys understand this one. I never really like teaching it this way, but some people understand it that way, so that's awesome. Work with it. Um, but those are three different ways you guys can solve for the square root of 32.